Steve's in the house. Nancy's in the house. She's moving there to be close to her daughter. You are. You didn't know? Yeah, we got a place down there for you. Just in case you're all wondering, we're going to just take a couple more minutes, hoping that Michael Jordan's going to show up. We, we invited him this morning, so we're just going to make sure we're not. Well, Steph Curry couldn't make it, you know, so we called Michael. He's going to try. Michael Jordan, not you. Michael Jordan, man. Yeah, sure. Jump right in there. Gary and Linda in the house. Right over there. Could you put the spotlight on there for me? They looked up for it. <laughs> So glad you're here this morning. People may still be coming in. That's okay. That's great. We'll go ahead and get going and set the tone and uh, just have a couple of extra minutes then to enjoy the presence of the Lord in worship. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you very much, Lord, for this opportunity to make you glad. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for your faithfulness to us, your generosity. Your grace, Lord God, poured out on us just by being here. Father, we thank you for every soul this morning. Lord, thank you for every soul. You know who they are, Lord. Those who serve you behind the scenes and up in front, all around, Lord, you know. Father God, we just thank you for how you teach us in your word that you notice and you see when we serve you and when we don't. Lord, thank you for those who are here this morning serving you. Father, we just praise you and thank you. Bring honor to your name this morning. 
by bowing down in our spirits. And so each of us, in our own way, we just do that to you, Lord. You deserve it. And we're so glad to do it. So, Lord, we just bow down now. We worship you. Our souls bow down, Father God. We're glad that our spirits can express things to you, Lord, because words and lips just fall so short. Lord, look upon our hearts now and know that it's you we love. It's you we trust. It's you we serve. In Jesus' name, amen. This word fair is different nowadays than it kind of used to be. The fair-haired maiden, remember those terms? And uh, fair, fair now is about justice or, you know, things being even or... If you say, oh, that's fair, and it's like, yeah, that's okay, you know, it's fair. Well, this hymn is about the fairest one of all, fairest Lord Jesus. I just invite you to expand your view of this and sing this to him uh, in that way that he's, this is about him being more beautiful and more glorious and more lovely and more amazing than anything. I just love this him. Okay, so feel free, sing it to him. Fairest Lord Jesus. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, the heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high, God of wonder. 
is beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Again. Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth. Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. When I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy, precious Lord, reveal your heart to me, you are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and God of wonders, God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy, precious Lord reveal your heart to me, you are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Yeah, honor him. Lord of heaven and earth. Just proclaim it. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Take a seat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just breathe. You're not here to get. You're here to give. But in giving, look what you get. Isn't that cool how he does that? In giving, look what we get. In the secret, in the quiet place, in the stillness, you are there, right here. In the secret, in the quiet hour, I wait only for you. Cause I want to know you more. That makes him so glad. I want to know you, Lord. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more. I want to touch you, Lord, I want to see your face, I want to know you more, I'm reaching for the highest goal, there's nothing higher that I might receive the prize. Pressing onward, pushing every hindrance aside, out of my way. That's right, because I want to know you more. Tell him. I want to know you, Lord. I want to hear your voice. I want to know. More and more and more. I want to touch. 
want you, Lord. I want to see. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more. I want to touch you, Lord. I want to see. to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to, to know you. You didn't have to show yourself to us at all. We know we've caused you grief. that you would help us to understand this morning that we are forgiven, that you love us, that you've written our names in your Lamb's Book of Life, that we are your children and you are our Father. We say those words and our minds just can't get around it. It's so far beyond us that you would do this. That it would please you that we want to know you. Lord, thank you for the opportunity this morning to bring joy to your heart. We thank you for Pastor Michael and the word he has from you to share with us. Father, thank you again for the amazing experience of being in your presence. It does cause us to love you and trust you and stand amazed. Thank you so much for all you've done for us all this week. Each of us in our own way, we just praise you for those things. We count our blessings. Lord, we want more not because we think we can handle it, because you've hidden anything from us, Lord God, but because we know you want that. So thank you, Father God, even though this is your time and we're bringing gifts to you of our praise and worship this morning, thank you for how you respond to us. Thank you for the incredible spiritual hugs and the sense of your approval and gladness means more to us than anything, Jesus. And because you've loved us so deeply, Lord, you've drawn us near, caused us to love you also. We thank you, Lord, that we can obey this first and greatest command, to love you, our God, our King, our Father. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Elder John. Am I on screen there? Um, well, I'd like to introduce our very talented speaker today, Michael Silva. Michael is with Senti Church. That's a Hispanic-based uh, church that meets in our building here uh, after our service, later in the afternoon, and they use it throughout the week. They've been great. Michael is a true evangelist. You're going to be inspired today. I can guarantee it. When we first met, 
you know, I ask him, well, where do your members come from? He, he says, I can find people in any parking lot of Walmart that need to hear about God. And that's the way he lives. He's out there beating the bushes. He's been here for about two years, I think now. And, uh, and already he had some members that were coming from San Francisco. And he said, well, that's too far to come. You can't make it often enough. I'm going to come over there. Now he's starting a new uh, church where he shares a facility. It's a great model uh, with another church in San Francisco. Uh, and I'm sure they're going to grow there. Um, when I asked Michael, can you come help us, please? Before I could finish, he said, what can I do? I'll do anything. What do you need? And uh, he reminded me of a verse and he said, in Ephesians. And he said, uh, you know, I don't think of you guys as the other church or anything like that. You're no longer strangers or foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. I said, Michael, you just wrote your introduction, and I meant it. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce my friend, Michael Silva. And Michael's still a newlywed. We attended his wedding here at our church. It was beautiful just yeah. a few months ago. What? Six Four, months. Six months. Six months already. Oh, wow. John, I mean, all the glory to God, you know, with, uh, with that introduction. Um, I'll take this away. Yeah, this is on, right? Uh, okay. All the glory to the Lord for that's all we are, instrument for his glory. No man should take his glory for he doesn't share his glory only with the Son. According to John uh, 17, when, the, when our Lord Jesus said, Father, the glory I share with you. Uh, glorify me as I glorify you with that glory that I share with you way before things were created. That just tells us right there that the Son, that Jesus Christ did not show up 2,000 years ago. That the Son has been the Son way before you and I were even in our mother's womb. And that's how much he loved us. He loved us so much that he, he loved us in the Son way before things were created, created according to Ephesians Chapter 1, verse 3, when Paul says, for these he created us so that we can walk in righteousness in the path that he has created for us. So, my brothers and sisters, this morning, um, I uh, like to make a little introduction of myself. I'm from Nicaragua, Central America. I was born and raised in Nicaragua until I was 15 years old. Then I moved to U.S. Um, in the year 2000, so I've been in this country for 22 years. Um, first experience, when I went to school, I didn't know how to speak English. The only word I knew in English was yes. So I remember I used to say yes for everything. I might be getting in trouble, and I'll be like, yes, yes. <laughs> I remember when I, first, uh, when I first went to school, right, um, there was uh, the reading time bell. So I thought it was actually like switching class to another class. So I got out of the classroom. And I find this lady, and I see the hallway empty, nobody in the hallways. I'm like, what's going on? Why is not, there's no one out here? And then this lady's coming at me with a green shirt, and he says, security, right? <laughs> so I'm like, she comes at me, and she just starts yelling at me and talking to me. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so she looked at me. I assume she said, this kid doesn't speak English at all. So she grabbed me by my arm, and she took me to the office, and then she found someone in Spanish. That was a great ex my first great experience here in America, you know, when I first got here. Thank God, you know, my English hasn't gotten better, but eh, I guess it's a little bit better than what it used to be when I first um, came here. Um, I've been a Christian since I was um, 16 years old, uh, aware of my Christianity, aware of my conversion, aware of the Lord and his um, sacrifice on the cross. I gave myself, I turned myself to Christ at the age of 16, November, October 28th, Saturday at 10 p.m., we were at a camp, youth uh, camp retreat. I remember like if it was my birthday, because that was the, the day I was born in Christ, the most important day of every Christian. We must celebrate and remember that day. For we were dead in our trespasses, in our sin, but he gave us life, a new life in Christ, and I delight myself in that. So I've been a Christian since, uh, aware of being a Christian, but I've been to church since I was eight years old. 
Uh, Hispanic grandmothers, they take you to church whether you want to go or not. So if you want to go, it's better. But if you don't, they give you a little whooping, you know. <laughs> they pull you by the ear, and they take you to church. And I honestly thank God for my grandmother for doing that to me, you know. And, uh, and I became a full-time, uh, I became a local missionary uh, five years ago. I did one-year mission here in San Francisco, first time leaving Miami. My entire family is in Miami. And then uh, I, after doing a year here, I went to Pennsylvania and then Trenton, New Jersey, where the Lord gave us the blessing to establish a little church of 20 people. Uh, met Pastor Rupert, um, big, tall Jamaican, American Jamaican pastor who offered me his house to congregate my people. Uh, and then um, it just, they just called me up here. They needed a pastor here for Sentry Church. And I've been here for two and a half years in San Francisco. The Lord blessed me a lot with a beautiful wife. Um, I apolo she apologizes for not coming this morning. She didn't wake up, uh, you know, uh, in good condition. She's fine, but it's one of those days, you know. <laughs> so, so she was a little bit overwhelmed. She's been working 12 hours a week, a day. So I told her to stay home and rest. Maybe next time she'll come and join us. Um, and, and it's been a great experience sharing the facility with you guys, our brothers in Christ. And, um, and I know you try to communicate with some of the members of my congregation. And some of them speak English, some of them don't. But the beautiful thing is that we try to engage the love in Christ we have as one family. Uh, Rob, the last song he mentioned, he said, uh, well, when he finished the song and he was praying, he said, what a beautiful experience. What a gift to be in his presence. That is the most beautiful gift we could ever have as, as, as human beings. Anybody could buy you, woman, anybody, your husband could buy you the biggest and most expensive diamond. Man, we can get the most and nice and expensive car, but nothing can compare to the, to the gift of being in the presence of the Lord. Not only on Sunday, but every day, we have that blessing. And I know sometimes we get caught up in the everyday routine, and sometimes we forget to be in the presence of the Lord, but there is the Holy Spirit reminding us to go back to his presence. This is why it's so important to have the Holy Spirit in us. If you live in Christianity in your own terms, in your own strength, in your own belief, then you're not living the Christianity that God wants us to live. Because we don't live this by the flesh. It's by the power of God through the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that brings us to the presence of the Lord. And today, today, I want to talk about uh, one of my favorite characters in the Bible besides Jesus. Uh, I have many characters in the Bible that I like a lot. But um, this, this one in particular... I'm pretty sure you can relate to it as I can relate to him a lot. And that's King David. So I'm going to ask you to go with me to Psalms 27. And we're going to be preaching today in the verses 1 to 4. John, do you mind if I ask you for a favor? My, my computer is about to, well, it's 27%. It should be enough. I have the charger in my office, but maybe if I can just plug it, just in case. Thank you so much, guys. I'm sorry. I have my phone here, too, so if it dies, I have it in my phone. So we're going to talk about King David. Uh, and, and, and the one thing he desired the most, for those who take notes, today's sermon is what I desire of the Lord. Rob was praying. And he said, we're not here to ask. We're here to give. But in the giving, we receive. Right? So it's, 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 it's like if we were connected. But that just tells you, you know, that we are, and what John was saying, one spirit. So I'm going to ask you, if you take notes, like I said, what is the one thing that you desire of the Lord? What's the one thing that you desire of him? Give me one second. I'm going to take this jacket off because I don't know if it's you guys or me. Or I'm too nervous. 
but it's hot up here. <laughs> I think I'm nervous, but she's saying it's hot, so, so we're all nervous here today. <laughs> okay, so read with me uh, Psalms 27, verses 1 to 4. It says The word of God says like this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom should I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, these enemies were not playing. But he was too exaggerated. But it was literally like that. They stumbled and fell. Though an an host should encamp against me, my heart should not fear. The word shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. On one thing I have desire of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire, oh, thank you, Barry, and to inquire in his temple. We find all these things in these four verses. But we're going to be talking about verse 4. That's, that's, the, that's the main meal we're going to talk about today. Let's consider something about these men. The most powerful men of the most powerful nation in those times, right, confess three amazing things and powerful it makes three, of, three amazing things and powerful statements in his life. And that you and I, as believers, we should, they should be also amazing and powerful statements in our faith and Christian life. One, he says, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. And the Lord is my strength. Everything that every human being needs. Believer or non-believer. Most believers, we need this. Because the non-believer rejects it, sadly. But this is what every human being needs. Light, so that he can walk in the righteous path. Salvation, so that when death comes upon us, who can save us from it? The Lord. And strength. So that we can do it, deal with the afflictions of life. Because even though we're Christians, we still go through things. We still get sick. We still get sad. We still get, you know, afflicted by everything that goes around us. That's why we need the Lord so much. And these men, these men understood this really well. That's why I'm, I'm calling these three things powerful statements in his life about who God was for him in this psalm. The Lord is his light. The Lord is his salvation and strength. Everything, like I was telling you, that every human being, and especially Christians, needs in this life, and not only in this life, in the eternal life. If we don't have, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the Spanish, no. <laughs> That's why you have to read the, the text, <laughs> so you could understand what I'm saying. But um, not only for this life, but for the eternal life. We don't have his salvation. We don't have eternal life. So we need him. We need the Lord. And David understood this. He knew in his heart who God was in his life. And in this was the main reason why these men lived confident. He said, I am confident in the Lord. Question to you and to me, are we confident in the Lord? Especially when we went through COVID and it was really bad. Who were you confident on? Who were you resting on? Who were we resting on? On the government? On the doctors? On society, they were only doing what they were capable to do. Exactly. Anybody die from COVID from your congregation? 
Nobody died from COVID from our congregation. They got sick. We got sick. I got sick in December 2019, really bad, with all the symptoms. And I didn't know it was COVID. But who protected me? Who was the light? Who was the salvation? Who was the strength? God himself, the Lord. So David did not put his trust in his army, which it was big. If you read, I think it's Kings, where he actually counts the army he had. It was a big army he had. He didn't put his trust in his army. He didn't put his trust in his gold and silver and richness and wealth. And he was wealthy. <laughs> he, didn't put his, he did not put his trust in his fame and power as a king. He had all these things. He could, he could possibly, he could easily, easily depend on his army to defend him against his enemies. He could easily have anything in the world with all his wealth. And he could be, he easily do whatever he wanted, for he was king. But verse 4, what does he say? This one thing I demand and I seek of the Lord, and it's to dwell in his presence. Not, not on Sundays only, but all the days of my life. And the fact that he was dwelling in the presence of the Lord every day gave him what? Confidence. Not on him, not on material stuff, but on the Lord, on his God, our Father, our God. So the one thing he desired of the Lord, as if he, there was not enough with what the Lord has given him, King David Ask and seek for one thing. Not a powerful army like I was sending you. Not fame. Not pleasures of life. Not another kingdom or power. For he already had all these fleshly things. He already had all these fleshly things. But he asks and says, six for the one thing. What is the one thing that King David seeks and asks? According to these Psalms, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. Now, this is this this that David is seeking it has a name and it's called desire. Desire. What's your desire when you come here on Sundays? What do you desire when you come here? To be at peace with yourself? You could come here and be at peace with yourself. But that doesn't mean you're going to be at peace with the Lord. For the only one that gives us peace with the Lord is who? Christ. This is one thing I tell my congregation. Uh, well, it's the congregation of the Lord, but I'm his um, uh, administrator, right? Uh, I said, listen, coming to a Christian church does not make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is being born of the Lord in the Spirit and walking by the Spirit as a Christian, right? So a lot of people can come to church and be in peace with themselves. Okay, I'm good. I already did my part, so I'm okay with the Lord. I went to church, right? That's it. And they walk out of this place, and their life continues the same. There's no change. There's nothing going on in their lives. But the one that has the spirit, the spirit himself, is going to drag you to the presence, not only on Sundays, but Monday, but Tuesday, but Wednesday, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then you just can't wait to be here again on Sunday and shout and praise the Lord with Rob and his wife and singing and praising as a congregation so that we can have communion with the Lord, right? David had a desire in his heart. His son had a desire in his heart, Solomon. Name me one man in the Bible that God, God asked him, ask me anything you want and I'll give you whatever you want. Name me one guy besides Solomon. So far, I have not found him, you know? 
If you do, let me know so I can just go in and read about it. And what Solomon asked, wealth, kingdom, power? No, two things, wisdom and discernment so that I can lead your people. And the Lord was pleased with this request. But where did Solomon learn this from? From who did he learn it? His father, David. For he not only said, I desire the Lord, because the verse says, this thing I desire of the Lord and seek. So there's the desire and there's also, also what? The action. Listen, you and me as a Christian, the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, puts the desire in our hearts to seek him, to pray, to go on our knees and pray. Now, the desire is there. Now we must take, take action and do our part. And David was doing that. Are we doing that? We have to do that. If you really want to enjoy the Christian life and all its fulfillment, you enjoy it there in the presence of the Lord. Now, that desire reflects to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. This desire in David's heart reflects the need in his life for God's presence. How much do you need the presence of the Lord in your life? You don't need to tell me. These are, you know, questions so that we can answer to ourselves and, and see in our hearts how much are we desiring the Lord? Do you ever wake up in the morning, like at 1.30 in the morning, you open up your eyes and you feel the desire to go and pray, even if it's only for five, ten minutes? That hasn't happened to you, it's okay, don't feel bad. <laughs> Maybe it only happens to us, you know, pastors or something, that we have to pray for the church and stuff like that. But it happened a lot. 4.30 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning. And I got to be honest with you, most of the time, out of five times, three times or four times, I, I, I'm defeated by my tire. I'm tired, I'm sleepy, that bed is warm, let me stay here next to my wife, you know, and I stay there. But some other times, I go and do what I have to do. And it's not that the church needed my prayer, it's that the Lord desire me like I desire him. It's... it's it's like, it's like when, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm with my wife, I desire her presence. When she goes away from work, for work, she works at Daily City. And it's 2 in the afternoon, and I'm like, Are you, don't, don't leave work late, please. Can you leave at 5? Because she usually leaves at 5.30, sometimes at 6. So I'm like, please just come home, you know, I'll be home at 6.30. Don't stay late, and this and that. And she's like, oh, I got a lot of work to do. I'm like, just do your best, because my heart is desiring what? Her presence. I want to see her. I want to touch her. I want to hear her voice. I want to see her, you know, uh, sitting down on the table with me. Listen, now that I'm married, I understand more the, the, the intimacy with the Lord. Just like I desire my wife, we have to desire the Lord just like that. I desire you, Lord, this morning. You are the desire of my heart, your presence. You can give me all the things you want, Lord. And he will. He gives us all the things we need, not the things we want. But if you're going to ask the Lord for something, ask him for this. Desire for his presence. Accompany, accompany me uh, to Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. Colossians 3, therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. So, again, Paul is talking about something that David has been talking to us about, and it's called seek. Right? 
Now, who's the only one that can actually seek the things from above, according to this verse? The ones that have been raised with Christ. Because one that hasn't been born again cannot seek the things of above. Because the things of above are like, I don't see them, I don't touch them, I don't understand them. But those who have been raised in Christ have been raised in who? In the Holy Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit of God comes from the Father. And if we are of the Father, we're going to seek the things of what? Above. And our minds are going to be set on one thing. The things that are above. This doesn't mean that you're not going to be worried about your mortgage. <laughs> this doesn't mean you're not going to be worried about, you know, your car payment. This doesn't mean that you don't have responsibilities on earth. But our souls don't desire these things anymore. These are just things the Lord has given us. But the thing we seek and desire are the things of above. The desire to seek the Lord, of course, in one who has been born in the spirit. And therefore, seek the things of the spirit. This desire to have communion with the Lord comes from a man or a woman whose heart dwells in the spirit of God. This desire is born of God so that we can come to him and have intimacy and communion with him. This is the gift that he has given those to those who believed in his son, that they should receive the spirit so that we all can have communion with him and dwell in his presence. This is the amazing gift. This is the promise that God gave to Abraham in your seed all the families of the earth will be blessed. And who is the seed of Abraham? Christ, our Lord. And through Christ, we receive the other promise that Jesus says a lot in John, in the Gospel of John. He said, you will receive the promise of the Father, that he will come in my name. And that is who? The Holy Spirit of God in us, with us, above us, around us. That was the purpose of God when he created Adam and Eve, man and woman, so that they can have children and families, and he will be their God, and he will, we will be his people. Now, this purpose is fulfilled in who? In Christ. In Christ. In Christ it is fulfilled. He is the promise that God made to Abraham. The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father to anybody, not only to the Jews, not only to the people from Israel, but to those who believe in the Son. Now, Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, if I'm not mistaken, verse 6, 7, and 8, he says, no, 9, 8, 9, 10, and 11. He says, those who are of the faith, those are the true descendants of Abraham. Why? Faith in who? In Christ. For in Christ, there's no longer Americans, Nicaraguans, Salvadorians, Europeans, Middle Eastern, Asians. There's only the family of Christ. And all the families are blessed in the seed of Abraham who is Christ. And this means we are with God and God is with us. Through where? His spirit, through his word, through the communion among the brothers and sisters. The Lord is here with us today. He is through you and me. For each and every one of us, we are a living stone, all established in the main stone, the cornerstone, who is who? Christ. Spanish speaker, English speakers, you name it. You name it. Look, Philippians 2.13. You go with me to Philippians 2.13. John, how much time I have? 30 more minutes? No. <laughs> this is just the introduction. 
<laughs> no, I'm just messing with you guys. <laughs> this is good because I'm feeling more comfortable with you guys. You know, I was very nervous. <laughs> but I guess, you know, I, I, I know a couple of you, so that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. But Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who is at work in you. Have any of you felt like there's nothing going on in my life? I don't feel God. I don't sense a spirit. I wonder if God is still with me. You ever had that feeling? Well, if you ever had it, don't worry. Look what he says. For God is, for it is God who is at work in you. He doesn't have to make a lot of noise for you to know that he's working in you or me. He's always working. He's constantly working. Remember when Jesus healed the woman that had the uh, hunchback? She, was, she had the hunchback for like 20 years. And it was a Saturday. It was Shabbat. And she came to him. And he raised her up. And the Pharisee says, it's not allowed for you to heal anybody on Shabbat. And then Jesus replied, my father works every day. He works every day. So I have to work as well. So he's working every day. Even if you feel like there's nothing going on in you, he's working. For his word says it. For it is God who is at work in you. Isn't this amazing? That he's working in us every single day. This, this, I never saw this happening. But he worked on it. He's working in you. He's working in me. He's working in all of us. Now, what is it that he's working in us? Both the desire and to work for his good pleasure, for his will, for his own will, so that all the glory could be for him. Now, what is he working on you and me? The desire and to work. The desire for what? For his presence. And he also gives us the strength that we need to go to his presence. He gives us the desire and the strength, the work, so that we can go to him. How is this possible, Pastor Michael? Well, you can call me just Michael. It doesn't make a difference to me. But how is this possible, Michael? How is this possible? I do not know, for this is supernatural, for this is of the spirit. If you try to find an explanation to it, it's only the work of God in the believer. Um, John knows this man, Martin. He, um, he's always confusing him with Balthazar, which is another Mexican. <laughs> Martin was a bum. He was homeless in the streets for five years. He dig a hole, and he slept on that hole. He will fight with demons and the devil, and he will walk for hours. He was gone in his mind. And one day, he said he tried to jump on cars so that he can kill himself because he was tired of living in the streets like a homeless. Until one day he said, Lord, I don't want to live anymore. Kill me. I don't want this life anymore. So he surrendered himself to the police. And the police brought him to a um, rehab place. And now he's been a Christian for three years. Four years, actually. Before these four years, he was homeless for five years. But he's been a Christian for five years. And he's here every Sunday at 1 p.m. helping me fix the door, I mean the chairs, put, setting them up, you know, the way we like them and everything. And he's vacuuming and he's clean. He's here and he comes dressed up nice. He reads his Bible. He, on Tuesday, we have men's meeting. He's there. Who does that, people? Who does that? The power of the Holy Spirit. So who do we have to trust? The Holy Spirit of God in us. We must trust him and obey him. Because he, he will put the desire in us and also the work. But if we don't do what we have to do, then we start drying up. We start drying up. We begin to dry it up. And then coming to church is boring. 
Then come into church, is not excited anymore. Then come into church and see the brothers, it's like, oh my God, here goes Rob again with his songs. Uh, you know when that happens? When you're not going in his presence anymore. When you're not seeking the Lord anymore. When you're not constantly in his presence anymore. Because if you're in his presence every day, or at least four times a week, but really, really, really in his presence, believe me, you're going to be fired up in the spirit. You're going to be fired up in the spirit. And you're going to want to come here. I want to hear Rob singing so that we can all sing. I want to see his wife, you know, playing the drums and this and that. I want to hear my brothers clap and this. And, and, and you feel the, move, the moving of the Holy Spirit in us. Now, this is amazing because this, this happens in Ephesians 2, 13 to 19. says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who previously were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. Who made, uh, for he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the hostility, which is the law composed to commandments expressed in ordinances so that in himself he might make the two one new person. In this way, establishing peace, and that he might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, by, by it having put the dead to hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both, have our access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are, and are of God's household. So Jesus came. He brought us near. For what? So that we can have access to who? To the things we desire? To the car you desire? To the house you desire so much, to the wife or the husband, well, most of you guys are married already, so, <laughs> to, 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 to the grandkids, to the child that you want, to the things of the earth, no. Access to the Father. We didn't have access to the Father. Who were the only people that had access to the Father? The people of Israel. And not everybody had access to the Father. Who was the only one that had access to the presence of the Lord? Who? High the high priest. The people of Israel knew God. And when God spoke to them in Mount Sinai, they all freak out. They all scared. They all got scared. And they said, Moses, you talk to him. Because we are scared. And you talk to him and you tell us what he tells you. And we will do as you say. And God established the high priest. Now, let me ask you one more thing. How often did the high priest go into the presence of the Lord? Once again? Once a year. So it wasn't whenever he wanted to go and, hey, Lord, here I am. I present myself in front of you. No. It was once a year whenever the Lord, when the Lord had established that day for the high priest to present himself. Now, remember what happened to the sons of Aaron when they presented uh, a strange fire in front of the Lord? They walked into the presence of the Lord. What happened to them? They died right away. Because the Lord didn't ask them. The Lord didn't tell them, come into my presence. It's like if I go to your house, Rob, and what's your wife's name? Linda. Linda. I go to Rob and wife and Linda, and they're at their room, and I open the door and come in. What are they going to say? Hey, who gave you access to? First of all, we gave you access to the living room. Now you're in our bedroom? Nobody gave you access to that. Rob is not going to take me out nicely. He's going to grab the guitar and get out of here. <laughs> now maybe not. I'm just... <laughs> well, you will come into our room when we allow you to come into a room. 
Men in the Old Testament didn't have access to the presence of the Lord whenever they wanted. That's why David is saying, I desire one thing. But Jesus did one thing for us. When he died on the cross, what happened to the veil? It split in two. Not from bottom to top, top to bottom. Remember what the veil represents? Nobody can go into the presence of the Lord but one man. When Jesus went into the presence of the Lord, presented himself as the perfect sacrifice, and you know what he did? He made way for you and I through the Spirit so that we can have access to the Father. Isn't this amazing? That right now we can close our eyes and say, Father, we're here. We present ourselves in front of you, and nothing will happen to us. And you know what's, what's the most amazing thing? That he said that his ears are aware to hear the prayers of his people. It's not that he's far away. He's never been far. He's been so close to us. But it was impossible for us to come to him for a human nature ever since Adam and Eve sinned. It's only, it's only leaning to the worldly and fleshly things. So we needed the help of God through the Holy Spirit to bring us to him. For this he came, died, and the Lord raised him from the dead so that we can receive not only his forgiveness and salvation, but his promises of love to all the families on earth who is Christ, his son, and by his son receive the promise of the Father, his Holy Spirit in us, in whom you, me, and all other brothers gathering today um, have having communion and access to the Father by the Holy Spirit of God in us. So to end this sermon, I want you to ask yourself one thing. And I want to ask you one thing. What's the one thing you desire of the Lord? Why do you come here on Sunday? Why do you pray every day? To ask him for the things you need? Or to be with him? Friday, Friday afternoon, I got 2 p.m. I'm working in the sermon for my church on Sunday morning. I mean, afternoon. And I felt in my heart this need to stop everything I was doing and just go on my knees and pray. And as I'm praying, as a pastor, I start praying for the church. Then the Lord says to me, I don't need you to pray for the church. I take care of the church. <laughs> for he is the one that builds the church. He is the pastor of his people. I just want you to be with me. And I broke down and I started just praising him and worshiping and, and just pouring out my heart and saying, Lord, I need you. you, you you're, not a, you're more than a desire. You are a need of my heart, my mind, my soul, my spirit. I need you in this life so I can meet you in the life after death. And I had this amazing time with him. And believe me, I was fighting because I wanted to pray for my church. I wanted to pray for the congregation. I wanted to pray for my brothers and sisters. And he said, don't worry about them. I take care of them. Just talk to me. And it was amazing. When we come to him, don't ask for anything. For he knows the things we need. Instead, if we're going to ask for something, let's ask for the spirit to dwell in the spirit, to dwell in his presence. So I ask you one more thing, and one last time, I'm sorry. What's the one thing? What is your desire of the Lord? Just like King David, the Lord is every believer's light and salvation and strength. He has defeated our enemies, so don't worry about your enemies like King David did. Don't worry about your enemy. God defeated King David's enemies. The Lord defeated the sin that condemned us. He delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. He defeated the world and its afflictions and persecution because of the faith in Christ. 
And the Lord also has defeated our most fearful enemy, death. All this was provided in Christ. But if it was not enough, he also provided us the Holy Spirit. So that in his spirit, we can come to him and desire his presence. Do not worry about your enemies. And your enemy is not your neighbor that you don't like. Our enemies was sin, dead, the devil himself and all his demons, and the world and his afflictions. And Christ defeated them all by dying on the cross. That's how strong our God is. So do not worry about them. But worry about being in his presence every single day. So let us desire the Lord. Let us desire the Lord to work in our hearts, just as he did in David's heart. Let us come to him with a humble heart. Let us seek his presence and dwell in his everlasting love. Let us be guided by the Holy Spirit through prayer into intimacy with our Father. Let us be moved by the Holy Spirit through reading the word, hearing the word, so that we know him more. For this we are called. For this is the eternal life, Jesus said in John 17, 3. This is the eternal life, so that they might know you as the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. That is the purpose of our life. Let the Lord, our God and Father, be the one thing we desire the most. For this we were chosen and brought near so that we can all be with him all the days of our lives. Amen? Let's pray. Rob, if you don't mind accompanying me with uh, just the guitar, I'm going to invite you to stand up if you feel comfortable. And just close your eyes and forget about your neighbor, forget about the person behind you, in front of you, just acoustic instrument. Thank you, Rob. And, um, and let's go into his presence and talk to the Father, for we were called for this. Okay? Trust the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit guide you in this prayer. Father, we come to you. Now we come to you, Father, because you gave us, you gave us the power, the strength, but also the desire. Before we knew you, before you found us, before you reached to us, we wanted to, Father. We wanted to come to you in many different ways. Maybe in the ways we were raised. Maybe in the ways we were taught. But it was like it was not enough. We wanted to be with you. But our sin, Father, separated us from you. We wanted to come to you, but we were in chains, Father. We wanted to come to you, but we were afflicted. And since we couldn't come to you, Father, you came to us. You came to us. Being in the form of God, you separated yourself, came down to earth, and made yourself like one of us. And you came down as a servant and gave your life for us. You gave your life for us. And you seek for the lost, for the, for the, for the one in sickness, for the brokenhearted, for the hunger and thirst of the spirit for the sinners like us. And you brought us near. You brought us near. We can ask you for many things this morning. We can ask you for a better job. We can ask you for a better salary. We can ask you for a better house. We can ask you for material things. But that's, that's not the one thing we desire. We only ask for one thing, and this we seek. And it's to be in your presence all the days of our lives. For this we were called, Father. Just pray and talk to your Father in the Spirit. Trust the Holy Spirit and let him guide you. 
For we have access to the Father now. Father, bless my brothers. Thank you for this family that you've given me. For we are one family in Christ. There are no longer Jews or Greek or Gentiles, but the church of Christ. Pray for your brother, the one next to you. Pray for your wives. Pray for your husbands. Pray for your kids. Pray for your families. Bless the families with your presence, Father. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time. Let us meditate in your word and work the desire in us to seek your presence all the days of our life like King David did. He desired one thing, and it's to be with you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray and we thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rob. Well, thank you, Brother Michael. You love his passion and his heart for the Lord. You feel it? So it's good. So, well, for those that um, are online, if you want to uh, prepare for our communion and bring your elements, and does everybody have elements? You probably didn't bring these, did you? We'll have to work on that. So, <laughs> we'll work on that. So, so I wanted to share a little bit just as a follow up to Michael's message and that. Um, now, normally I don't show up in shorts and a t-shirt. I'm usually dressed up a little bit. Michael makes me look bad over there. He's all dressed up and looks good. But now, so this is the one day in the year I get a dress in shorts and t-shirt because um, we're going up to camp today. Thank you. So it'll be fun. Um, and I'm bringing Taylor with me. Raise your hand back there, Taylor. You ready? There we go. She's getting embarrassed now. So I get, so I get to wear shorts and t-shirt and, and get away with it. So. <laughs> And so I wanted to bring um, a little bit of a message of what we're going to be talking about at camp all week and that. And so, and I just want to share it. It's amazing how well it fits with Pastor Michael's message. So God does that, doesn't he? It just kind of kind of works that way. And that, but our theme this year is about transformation or transformers. Now, of course, you've got the, you know, the real robot transformer dudes. We'll be talking about that too. But but the message is about transformation, and I love your story about your brother that was had lost all hope, and God changed him. And that, and that is what God wants to do for all of us. And I want to just us to think about that for a minute as we share in the communion time. And that I'm going to be reading out of Romans 12, a familiar verse probably for most, um, but powerful. A very powerful message that God has. And, he, and, and so Paul is writing to the church in Rome, but he's writing to us as well because we need it as well. And he says, brothers, do not be conformed to the world. Do you feel that sometimes we get kind of start getting stuck in the mold of the ways of the world? It weighs us down. It's heavy. It's hard. Um, Paul says, don't be conformed to the world, but, but what? Be transformed. Be changed. How? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect in God. And that now, I, Michael kind of still shared half part of that message. How do we be transformed? It isn't us doing it, is it? If it were up to us, what would happen? We'd make a mess out of it. We, 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 you know, you ever work with really little kids and, and they, like, they're trying to, you know, build something, you know, you know, some art project or whatever, and they're like two or three years old. They don't, they have a hard time creating something. You know, they, they, they create neat stuff, but it's, you know, it doesn't really look well, like, like much because they haven't 
learn how to. And that's kind of like us when we try to transform our own lives. We're that little two-year-old that's just kind of making a mess out of the Play-Doh. That's who we are. But when the master comes in, what does he do? He wants to change us, truly change us from the inside, right? Amen. So what is, what is God trying to do? What does he want to change us to? A couple of chapters back in um, Paul, Paul's same letter in Romans, he's writing um, in that, and he's talking about what Christ has done, and he says, For those he knew ahead of time, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of who? His son. And that, and so what we find in the in in the message of the New Testament of the Gospel of Grace is that God is at work trying to change us into the image of His Son to be like Jesus. Now, do we get there all at once? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably not. Do we get there completely, even in, at the end of this life? No, well, probably not. It's a work in progress. The whole, our whole lives. But that is what God is about. He does want to save us, but he also wants us to be changed, to be transformed in that. And I can, I'm can i sure there are dozens of testimonies in this room right here of how God has changed you or someone you love. In that. So I want us to think about that as we take communion this morning. Um, you know, the only way it's possible for us to be changed is that Jesus went to the cross for us to die for our sins, like Michael shared, to give us access to the Father so that we could be truly changed. And that's, so when you think about that, what is God working on in you? What does God want to transform in you this week, this month, this year? He is at work in all of us. And so I just want, as we, as we take communion today, to think about what is that thing God is working in your life on? How does he want to transform us? As we take communion, we remember his death on the cross. We remember his resurrection. And we look forward to the day when he'll come again. And so in communion, we get to think of those things. But I want you to think about, he did all that for us. How is he wanting to work in us this week? I know he's working in all of us. Whether we let him do it, that's a different matter. But he wants to work. So let me pray for us, and then we'll share in our communion. But think about that and pray in your own heart. God, what are you wanting to change in me? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you not only want a relationship with us, you, through your Son, you wanted to save us so that you could spend eternity with us. But there's so much more you want. You want to truly transform us, Father. And you transform us into the people you designed us to be. So, Father, I pray you'd open our eyes and our hearts to, 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 to feel your presence, as Michael shared. But show us, Lord, where you're working on us today. Guide us in that. Thank you that through the cross, through the price that Jesus paid, we can truly be children of God and we can be changed. And someday we'll be fully changed when we come into your presence. So help us, Father, this morning to see your work, Lord, to not be conformed to this world and the things of this world, but to allow your Holy Spirit to transform Form us into the image of your son. We pray in this in the precious and beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. So let's share our elements. So on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He said, This, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after he'd shared among them, and he said, this, this is the new covenant in my blood. Drink this. Do this in remembrance of me. 
For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he what? Comes again. He is coming for us again. Amen. Robert, you want to come share some announcements? And then Rob will close us out with a final song. So I want to thank Michael. That was very nice. Thank you for being part of the family. So um, I want to um, pray for Chuck Carnes. He's still in John Muir Hospital, recovering from gallbladder surgery. He's struggling with an infection, and he's also having lung issues. And I also want to pray for his family for the comfort and, and for energy because they're dealing with him. And it's, you know, if you've had a sick relative, it's never easy on anybody. It's, it's rough. Um, I want to pray for John and Delia Ornelius. They're online worshipers on the Zoom, on the Zoom uh, on Wednesdays. They're having pray for uh, breathing difficulties caused by the recent, hold on, hold on by the recent local fires. And we're very thankful. We have been praying for Fred and his COVID, and he's, we're blessed to have COVID Fred with us. It's good to see you, Fred. Thank you, Robert. And we want to pray for Michael Belletti. Continue to pray because he's having throat issues and muscle weakness. Um, so pray, keep praying for Michael. Our the, pray that, our God is preparing us to, result, to receive the pastor he wants to lead our church family. He's equipping, and he is equipping that pastor to serve here at FCC, First Christian Church. That God, is, that God is blessing all the pastors that are supposed supporting our leaders and church family through sermons on Sunday mornings, support coaching in the, of our existing leadership team, and praying for our church that we receive much needed support. And we so on Wednesday nights we do have the sermon 2.0. Barry usually runs it, but he's got all the other stuff going on. We'll talk about that later. And um, this week on um, Sunday on uh, Wednesday Wednesday's evening at seven, it's going to be hosted by John, which he did a great this last week. John hosted it, and it was a great Bible study. So that's very much recommended. If you want to get involved with that, you need to talk to John, Barry, or myself. We'll get you hooked up. So our upcoming preaching, we're, we're, we're very blessed. On uh, Father's Day, we're going to be having Rob Baker. He's going to be bringing us a great message. And if you've been waiting to hear Rob speak, again, this is going to be your week. But um, right after that, this is a big, a big event we have for our church on July 3rd. We're going to have a, have a party, a relaxed, ho it's a holiday party. We're going to have a hot dog. We're going to provide hot dogs and hamburgers in the back and barbecue them up. And then um, we're inviting anyone that wants to come. Bring a pot, if you want to bring a potluck item, something you want to share, that's all good. And Cinti Church is very welcome to. It's an open invitation in the backyard after after service. Um, and also, besides this, that on April third, April third we are or not April third, July third. Where am I? <laughs> July third. I, I said that on purpose. <laughs> no, on July third, we're also going to be having David Gleason. He's going to be preaching. He's the oldest son of Rob and our ben, Bob and Glenda Gleason. He's been, we, it's been 20 years since we heard David preach. You would not want to miss this one. So we're going to have a, a pre him preaching. Yeah, I gotta keep, uh, everything's so much easier when you got to keep growing your arm. So we would like to reissue the... So 
if anybody wants any information on this, you can contact me. Our, uh, if any, all my, I'm going to write down all my information. We're going to be starting a new contact list because some of us aren't getting. Come on, honey. <laughs> some of us aren't getting like calls from people, and we can't get a hold of people we see on Sundays. So we want to stay in contact with people. Stay in contact with people. With people. We gotta uh, make a new contact list because so we can put our phone numbers, our emails. We can text each other throughout the week or whatever you want to do. And if you want to be have any information, right? Talk to John Larry, Elder John Larry, or myself, or Barry if he's around. But right now, what I want to do is I want to call Barry and Taylor up here to the stage. They're going to be leaving for summer camp. And I would like to call J John Larry up here, Rob Baker, and Michael Silva up here also. Just to put hands on Barry and, Barry and Taylor as they, as they leave for camp. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, Barry and his willingness to serve in this capacity. Lord, uh, it's a long way for him to bend over for some of these kids, uh, but he does it with a joyful heart. Lord, and as they are being transformed, uh, as Michael said today, Lord, uh, it, it's all of us that need to be transformed. We're constantly needing to seek you, seek your presence and your guidance. So thank you for that. Lord, we ask that it be not too hot that the evenings be cool, and that the fellowship that goes on between the kids is what lasts a lifetime. We thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. messing around during our prayer time. <laughs> I told Jesus on you, man. <laughs> I also remember when I first met Pastor Michael, and I was out painting the curbs, uh, and he came up to me and said, excuse me, um, I don't know you. W what are you doing? He was nice, though. He says, are you the one that's been doing all this painting out here? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They won't let me come here unless I do something, you know. And then he said, well, you know, you, gotta, you, you, you missed a couple of spots over here. And you got some paint on my car. So it's been a real blessing, man. No, he was like, why don't you let me know? I'll come and help you paint. <laughs> I said, brother, I think you have enough things to do. I'm doing this so you don't have to. Isn't that cool how the Lord helps us understand that serving him is such a source of joy? Not, not only for us. I mean, when you do something for God and you feel his pleasure, that's a pretty cool experience. But when you serve him and involve others, you get the double blessing. I know that Michael and uh, John and Barry and uh, all the leadership here would just love to see this church come under the shadow of the Holy Spirit and receive a double blessing. 
on a regular basis. So part of that is to yield to him and surrender to him. So big breath now. Just take a big breath. It's as simple and as profound as that to come to God. It can be as normal and natural as breathing. Take a big breath of him now and worship him. Breathe deep, breathe deep, and come to God. Breathe deep, breathe deep, and seek His face. Breathe deep, be still. I breathe, I live. I breathe, I live. I trust, I give. I'm here, I'm his, I'm home. Breathe Breathe deep. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. How we love you, Jesus. How amazing you are. How impossible it is to capture you with words. So thankful 
for the effect you have on us. The transforming. Fulfill my greatest desire effect. Thank you so much, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you. All your people saying right now, we love you, Jesus. We love you. Thank you again for your awesome presence. Without it, we're just going through motions and making noise. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for your ongoing, never leave us, never forsake us presence. All these things we proclaim and declare with confidence, Lord God, because of your presence. Again, all together we say thank you, Lord, and pray all these things. Keep us ever listening for your voice, Lord. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.